Let's jump into now the Disc Golf Pro Tour announces the 2024 qualifying series, which they are calling the Q series. This was something that we kind of saw coming with the silver events and the silver events going away and being less important. So they have now created a qualifying series. This is designed to offer FPO and MPO players a new pathway to earn their place on the 2025 tour. Um, another way to qualify, qualifier series of PDGA A-tier events with separate point system and series finale. This will award six MPO and four FPO players 2025 tour cards to local and up-and-coming pros plus partial silver cards awarded to individuals uh, as Q series winners. We also have the list of events that will be a part of the Q series. So the 303 Open in Denver, Colorado, we've got the Capital of Texas Open in Austin, Texas, Cascade Challenge in Sel Shelton, Washington, Infinite Dis Beehive Classic in Ogden, Utah, the Kansas City Wide Open in Liberty, Liberty, Missouri, the Discrafts CCR Open in Holt, Michigan, Diameter Open in Port Hope on is that Ontario must be Ontario, yes. and the Mary Sunshine House Classic in Seneca, South Carolina. Now, just looking at this, Yuli, the first thing that jumps off to me is this does not look like easy for someone to compete at these are all over the united states it is <clears throat> um but i don't think it should be easy that's what i'm going to say right away i don't think it should be easy i think that if you're looking to make this golf your career standards have to be standards have to be set and they're going to have to be set high um if you look at like other places that have tour cards like it's tough it's tough to get those spots. They're coveted spots. They're coveted things. Like you have to earn them and you have to show that like you're willing to grind and go across the country and grind it out. And maybe, you know, like, like, let's say you play five of these events, half of them, you're missing the cut, but then two of them, you just have like a breakthrough performance. You win mm -hmm. one of them, you take second at the other one. And then all of a sudden you have an exemption for 2025. Like, I feel like there's a lot of storylines that can come out of that. And that's something that I do like. Now, as far as um, they're spread out everywhere, yeah. Should they all be in one state? Like, yeah, should they know. all I'd... be within three states? I don't think so. You know, well, here's my issue is like... Are you saying time? My issue is like you're not making money on any of these. Like, no. people that are playing these events don't have sponsorships that are going to be paying for them to fly or drive across the country to play these. My, my question is why did they go this route? Why did they go this route of having these all over the place? Why didn't they do something where it was like, Hey, there's these five events in the Southeast. There's these five events in the Northeast, five events in the Midwest, five events out in um, the Northwest. Uh, I said Northwest, the Midwest, excuse me, five events. And then, you know, why didn't they do like sections and then you qualify out of your section. And then from there you go to like the big qualifier. And then that's how you did like, why didn't they do something that like, if I, if I have a nine to five job and I, and I am grinding, right. I'm working nine to five and then I get off my job and I'm practicing. Like I can't, I can't just quit my job and like try to, but that's not the way the real world works in sports. Like it's either you're all in to do this dream and you go and do it or you're not. Like I have I have no sympathy for somebody who who is doing that because I live that life of we didn't have a tour and I played every single weekend across the country to make nothing, to make zero money just because I love to do it. So I yeah, might I'm be saying, I might I don't be the this... wrong person to even ask. Yeah, cuz I don't you know think this mean? I, yeah, I don't, me personally, if, you're, if your goal is to try to get the best players in, if your goal is to try to find new talent, you got to make that to where it's easy for people to enter. And then the cream rises to the crop. This might just be whoever has a, uh, what is it called when your parents have a bunch of money for you? What, what do you call those kids? Um, oh, what do you call that? You're just a blah, blah, baby. Trust, trust, fund. trust fund. Yeah. 
this might as well just be called the trust fund series, right? Because you're, you're going to have people that have a lot of money do well in these. I don't know, man. Like, you don't think so? No, I don't think so. Because if you're going to do this, it's not, I think you're looking at it all wrong. Am right? I? I think you're I looking at it as, okay, these are the events and these guys are just focused on these events. If you're making this a career, you're, playing other tournaments as well as these you're going and finding a tiers to play at to make money to go to the next one yeah but you're talking about like these people that are that are literally trying to uh make ends like week after week like i'm talking about like the james proctor right the guy that should have been on the pro tour for so long but wasn't because the money just wasn't there yet like i want those guys that Hey, I'm not, I, I'm not in a position. I have a family. I have kids to feed. I'm not in a position to just throw all that all away to now I'm just living in a van, driving around, playing in C-tier and B-tier events, trying to make money. Like I want those people or also kids that are just out of college, like go get a job and then potentially work your way onto the tour, right? Like, is that not... I mean, a, I feel a, that, but I, good I've, idea? I've, I feel like if you're talking about that same story to somebody who's trying to make it on another tour, it's not going to be that. Like, there's no, there's no halfway point. You know what I mean? Like, very rare do you hear somebody who's like, okay, I'm a, I'm a pro at this golf club, and then I entered into this tournament, one tournament, right, on the, let's say, a qualifier to get in the PGA tournament. And then they go in that tournament and then they play really well and they get an exemption. I mean, when's the last time you Yeah, but a lot of, that? of those guys are playing in mini tours that are that are regional. There there are tons of mini tours in golf that are regional. Yeah, like, we I, have I, those, and we, I don't and that's have what to I'm leave. saying. We have those. It's called the C tier and B tier tour. Yes, I know, but this is now telling you you have to travel far outside of where you would normal travel cuz three three of these events count. So if you live, let's just say you live in Georgia, right? You, for you to qualify, you're going to have to play in three events. What, what three events are you going to? If you live in Georgia, you're going to South, you're going to the South Carolina one, mm -hmm. right? And then what? Missouri. Sure. I mean, and you, then Michigan? You, you tried to make it on the PGA tour kind of, right? You tried mm -hmm. to become a PGA tour player. Where yeah. were the qualifiers for you? Was it an easy life? Was it easy for you to just find a qualifier right neck, right in your neck of the woods and play six of them around that spot and be like, okay, now I'm on the tour. So, no, you have to, to go get, and travel to, to qualify though, for some, for like the, to qualify for, um, corn fairy, to say. qualify for corn fairy. It's a couple different weeks and they do have events all over the United States. Now the guys that have the funds and have the money, they can kind of hand pick what course is going to suit them that they feel like they have the best chance. Also, it makes sense also to maybe look at the field and be like, this is a stacked field. They're only giving out four spots. Let me try to find another one. But the, the, I, like, I wasn't having to do three events across the United States. And then also too, the thing with the corn fairy is I went to one event. If I made it out of that event, then I went to the next event. Like it was, it was like a, okay, now it was let, like, now let's this is not that like, this is disc not golf, like that though. Right. Yeah, I know. But how many people play golf? How many people play disc golf? I mean, it's not close. Yeah. It's I not agree. close. So let's compare those two things. You get what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. yeah. And in, in, in like a perfect world, we'd have a hundred events for everybody to try to qualify for the, for the PDGA tour, but we don't also a, a really good question would be, are they filming those tournaments? Good question. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know really what because what are the, that, what are the that's payouts. Question, then I, I can know. come back to you and be like, okay, this is why there's not a lot of events is because mm -hmm. they're trying to showcase these players, maybe final round or whatever. But I don't, I don't know the logistics yeah, as far as that goes. There's not too much information about that yet. Um, the other information they did say is that the top 25 FPO and the top 50 MPO qualify for the Q series finale. So you play all these events. Your top three finishes count. And then from that, those top players go to the Q series finale. There's the same point distribution as the disc golf pro tour events, awarding hundred points to the winner, uh, separate from disc golf pro tour world standings and only players who have not earned a 2025 four card can score Q series points. And this is a big, big point for me. So the Q series finale 
is only open to qualified players who have not already earned a 2025 tour card upon the conclusion of the disc golf pro tour season. If a competitor participates in the Q series events, but then earns their 2025 tour card via other meth methods, right? So like you go, like you said, you qualify and, or they also have it to where if you end up being in the uh, top um, 91 to 150, I think world championship world standings and 46 to 80 for FPO, you qualify as well. Um, they will no longer be, and they'll be come ineligible to earn more Q series points ineligible to compete in the Q series finale. So this, this is very interesting player eligibility. Okay. To participate in a disc golf pro two Q series tournament, all competitors must meet the PDGA player requirements for the sanctioning level of the Q series event in question and follow any other requirements as set forth by the tournament director. Competitors who have already qualified for a 2025 tour card may participate in Q series events, but will be skipped over for the purposes of awarding any associated Q series benefits, silver cards, tour cards, exemptions, and points. So this kind of goes back and I'm still on the fence on this. You're creating a, I don't like that. You're creating a series that mm -hmm. you literally said, this is a new pathway to earn your spot on the 2025 tour. But, you're allowing people that have tour cards to come and play and take the money that's going to take to from them to get to play in the these next events. Spot. Yeah. And they don't get the points. Yeah. So like you could have the the top 5 or 10 people could all be tour card holders. And so you finish 11th, but no you really finish first in the I don't I don't like that. I don't And no. I think we went back and forth a little bit on this in the past of where I think you actually brought up a really good point saying don't you want the Calvin Heimberg to show up at one of these events to draw in the attention to the event? And I agree. Yes, that would be nice, but that's not what this event should be about. I, I don't think these events should be about, Hey, let's try to get a bunch of fans to show up. No, now these, that it's, these are, they should that, be about trying to get talent, new talent. Now that this into is the a, tour. a way for new players to get on the pro tour. I don't think anybody with an exemption should be even be allowed to play in this event. Personally, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't get it's how it's got to be like if you have a tour card, you're not allowed to play in this event. Sorry, but this is a way for new players to play, earn, and and you made a good point, earn money to go to the next spot. Yeah, because let's say that, like you said, five other people, Ricky, Calvin, Eagle, they all decide to go to the Cascade ca Challenge. They take the top five spots. It's just weird. Then, and then you get sixth place money, seventh place money, but you actually won, but you only got 500 bucks, and that doesn't even count. That doesn't even pay for your travels. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to push back a little bit here with Mark Myers, one of our Tour Life crew uh, members. They said in the chat, a pro relies on their sport to make a living. People that work for a living and play disc golf on weekends for a few bucks isn't a pro. Now, I would agree with you to consider yourself a professional athlete or something like that. The, the, the naming of it being professional means that that is what you do to make a living. My pushback, though, is I don't think necessarily that's what needs to happen for this Q series to work. I think you can look at vastly or tons of different sports where you have guys that are working nine to five day jobs that have normal nine to five jobs and are grinding outside of that to try to get better at their craft to one day, maybe be a, be an actual professional athlete. I mean, you look at the Olympics, ton of the, ton of the people in the Olympics, that's what they do as well, right? They're not, you know, swimmers there. A lot of them aren't swimming full time. They have normal jobs and they swim when they can and they go to the Olympics. Kurt Warner was bagging groceries for a bit. Yes, I think there was another guy recently that was um, working at a grocery store and is now a starter. And there's stories like this that you can find in all the sports. So this idea, and this is why I was pushing back on you, Yuli, this idea that you're trying to create a qualifying series to get your tour card. I don't think that series should be like, hey, you need to quit your job and you need to go all in on this qualifying series. 
I, I think that's what it should be when I, you get your tour card. I, hear I you. don't think that's what it should be when you're trying to qualify. I hear you. Let me rephrase what I think about that, okay? I think you're right. It should be open to everybody to do that, okay? I guess it's maybe the coach in me that's telling myself, you're not going to make it if you have both things because there's going to be somebody out there who's doing it all. And they're going, nope, I don't have a job. This is what I worked for two years. I saved up my money, and now I'm going after this goal. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You're going to have to compete with that guy. And so my advice to people when they ask me, what do I got to do? I, I always say, like, it's either there's no, like, halfway in the door, halfway out. Because I agree it, with that. I yeah, agree and with that's, that. And that's sure. where my mind goes because I'm like, whoa, calm down. Like, I went, I had to go all out to get where I was. And so... There's one path for me that works. You know what I mean? I don't know this other path. I haven't lived that path. And so I can't then give the advice and be like, no, this can totally work. Because then I'm like not giving information that I know. Does that make sense? It makes 100% sen uh, makes 100 sense. But I think where disc golf is right now, even being a top 50 player in the world, you're Doesn't not even you making that much money. Yeah. So this this idea of like, Hey, everyone just go all in. It doesn't make sense right now for disc golf, but if the pro tour got, you know, more money and bigger payouts and in this Q series, let's even say this Q series, let's say the top 20 guys in Q series all are taking home $30,000. That notion of what you're saying, I can, I can, I can, uh, agree with you a little bit more than right now. It's like, Hey, quit your job. Try to make it on the Q series. Oh, you qualified. Great. Like you're not even guaranteed to make more than ten thousand dollars. I think I was neither. Neither are you if you make the PGA Tour. That's sports, man. Uh, you yes. you miss every single cut. You're not making yes. any money. Yes, but if you make one cut, you're getting paid sixteen grand for last place. That ain't much, Brody. It's not like the, it's, it's not like it's, the guys. It's better it's not, than me getting. I think I was. Someone just said I was like thirty fifth or thirty seventh in disc golf pro tour points, and I made ten thousand dollars. I mean, yeah, it's, it's way than that. It's way. Sure. It's way. Di I'm just saying it's it's a different. Like one is like disc golf right now is basically the lottery, right? Of where you're you're just like maybe I am one of the top guys, and maybe it's it's much more like the lottery than golf. I mean, there are guys that are on mini tours that are making, making decent a lot amount of money. money. Yeah. Right. So it's like, it's not, it's not, it's way different. One, one, there's a one. Yeah. It's way different kind of in comparison. It I'm is, telling you, there's dude, a bigger pool dude, $4 of million dollars compared to 16,000 for last cash for a tie for last cash. That's a gigant. That's infinitely bigger than what we're dealing with. No, I agree. I mean, I'm just talking more on the fact of like, if you were like, Lifestyle hey, mom and dad, spray. I have a $60,000 job right now, but I'm quitting it to try to become a professional disc golfer, you better be really freaking good or really good in front of the camera. Yeah. No, you're because right. Because if you're not either one of those, like uh, that was and, a terrible and like decision. like I said before, you better not half-ass it, man. Yeah. Now, now, 30 years from now, what, we, what we're saying right now can be completely... Different. Yeah. completely stupid. But. I'm just scared. I, I'm scared for it because I don't want to see some kid doing, doing both. Because in, in my opinion, it's very, it's, it's unlikely they're going to make it doing both. But you look like a Gannon Burr, like Gannon Burr, I think did it right. Like oh, he, didn't he was 16 and an absolute phenom. The, the, the biggest no, but phenom he did it, I've ever seen even, in a sport. But, no, that's, that's kind of crazy, Brody. No, because no, 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 no. In but he didn't drop sports, out of school. He didn't drop out of school. He didn't just say like, I'm dropping out and I'm just going full in on disc golf. Like no, but once, there, once there's he, prospects in every single sports that have made it from the time that we see them and the talent that they have, and they don't have to worry about it because they're going to make it no matter what. James Proctor is another perfect example. Like he slowly worked himself into it to where he probably got the sponsorship. You know, he played enough tournaments where he started getting sponsorships. Proctor he could did, always go on tour and make it. He, he, he just did didn't. It. Yes, but there are people out there that I think it would be a very bad decision to quit their job and then try to become a professional disc golfer. It's a bad decision for everybody except for like 15 people in the world. What are you talking about? I, that, that's what I'm saying with this qualification thing. I don't want to see a bunch of kids but it's not spend about $5,000 going all over trying to qualify. All and then I'm they saying lose. is sometimes it's not about that. It's about making it on the pro tour is the goal. 
You know what I mean? Like when I was out playing all yeah. this time, I wasn't thinking, okay, I'm going to then win national tours for 1500 bucks every single weekend. And I'm going to become a thousandaire. You know what I mean? I just wanted to be one of the best. Yeah. I, I, sometimes I just, sports comes down to that. Just, just wanting to be the best. I just wish it was easier entry. That's, Me too. that's my only thing. I just wish it was, I don't, I wish people didn't have to hop on a flight multiple times. Like if you don't live in one of these States, you're, you're hopping on a flight probably two times. Yeah. To go play at these events. 